Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. Today, guys, we do AFCON. I believe is day four of the reaction. So we're gonna go ahead and do this, guys. Remember, guys, like and subscribe, of course. And in around ten minutes from now, you know, by the time you guys are watching this, there will probably be a live stream for you guys coming up. So you know, for the Asian Cup. So we're gonna start with the first game we just got here is Burkina Faso one, Mauritania nil. Wow. Burkina Faso, man, I feel so bad for Martinia because Martinia played so well this game. And shout out to Kofi, man. Kofi was a man of the match for Burkina Faso. He kept making save after save after save. And he was just unbelievable in this game. The amount of saves he did in this game. And um, Martinia, man, look at the amount of chance they had. Look at this one right here. The, the saves he made. You know, it was unbelievable. And for um, Martinia, man, I feel really bad for them because they played really well in this game. The 77th minute, that was a really good save there. And then the seventh minute of the game, save there, save. And he was just unbelievable, you know. And for Burkina Faso men, um, they got lucked out in the end. I think they honestly didn't deserve to win this game. But as I said, though, it doesn't matter about deserving whatever. It's about getting it done. And they did get it done, whereas Martinia didn't. And they got a last-minute penalty. And it was, for me, it looked a bit soft. But I think it was a penalty. It was the right decision. Up step. Bertrand Trent comes off the bench in the 73rd minute, scores a dagger in the 96th minute of stoppage time. And to give Burkina Faso a massive win. And believe it or not, guys, I think my commentator was saying that Burkina Faso never won the opening game of AFCON. So this is the first time they ever won the opening game. And shout out to Burkina Faso because they've scored in 15 consecutive games in the AFCON. So Burkina Faso, man, maybe it's their year to win it. Maybe it's their year. Who knows, man? For Mauritania, man... It's it, they, they were solid defensively. I think they defensively were amazing on the day. The goalkeeper also came up clutch with a few saves. But ultimately, the problem is they just couldn't hold out, man. They just couldn't hold on. I think the pressure was getting to them. They got they got too, uh, just they couldn't handle it, you know. And just a few seconds later, they could have maybe hold on for a draw, which a draw would be an amazing result. Had they got a draw in this game, that would have that would make this group very interesting. But you know, it is what it is. And um, now Breaking Up also sits at the top of this group. So, yeah, moving on to the next game we should go out here is Tunisia versus Na Nanibia. Nanibia. It's not Nambia, it's Nanibia. Hopefully I pronounced that right. I think I'm pronouncing this right this time. And Tunisia, man, I you can see this team doesn't have enough attacking quality. And I think the Tunisia thing is that um, they're just, I, I just think that Tunisia, man, they just lack that killer instinct. They lack the killer instinct. And we saw this in that World Cup in the sense that they create a lot of chances, I believe, against Australia, but they just weren't clinical enough. And I think you could see this team is really struggling without, without Wabi Kaiser. Wabi Kaiser is such an, such an important player for this team, and they really uh, miss him on the day because he was just a difference maker for them. Because, honestly, this guy up top at Kanseni, I didn't think was great. I didn't think was great whatsoever. He only played 15 minutes, to be fair, but still, I thought he was a bit underwhelming. And you have to shout out to the Nibia keeper because he was excellent today. Kazapo, he made a lot of good saves. At Tunisia, for me, that first half were very, very, eh, they were not great in the first half. I think this, the first half, Nanibia were the much better team. You can see the stats here, and they were dominating the game from, you know, and Tunisia just didn't really create any notable chances. Credit to Tunisia, though. In the second half, they did come alive, though, um, and then they forced some early saves from Nanibia keeper, um, half from the corner there in particular, kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And then finally, at the last minute of the game, the substitute Menzo, Comes on the 73rd minute. Puts a beautiful cross. A beautiful cross for Hoto to score in the 89th minute to give Nanibia three points. Uh, and, and then obviously they even had another goal that was disallowed in the stoppage time. Clearly offside. And for Tunisia, man, as I said, man, they have to, they got to improve, man. Because a lot of Tunisia chances came through set pieces. That was their best chance of scoring. And I realized with this Tunisia team that they're kind of set piece merchants, to be honest with you. They really are set piece merchants. And... If, if Because I just don't see them scoring from open play. If they're going to score, it was going to be from a set piece. And so for Nanibia men, shout out to them. Because now this group is very interesting. Because now we have a real possibility that... Could Tunisia get grouped? That would be surprising if they do. So we'll have to see. And moving on to the final game we, we got here, guys, was obviously South Africa versus Mali. And um, <sighs> Mali, man. South Africa, man. South Africa, man. They they really messed us up. They really, really messed us up. And I'm looking at you in particular. Because South Africa, for me, were the better team the first half. I think South Africa, for me, were the, the better team the first half. Mali, for me, weren't really that great in the first half. They were, eh. 
Uh, but, you know, that penalty, man. That penalty is going to be the huge talking point. And for me, it was a very harsh penalty. I, I don't know if I agree with the decision. Uh, very, very harsh penalty there. Ups to up, Tau, and he blazes it wide. He sends it wide, man. Percy Tau puts the penalty wide. It was such a garbage penalty. Because here's the thing, guys. When it comes to taking penalties, my thing is that I don't criticize the player if you at least put it on target. If you don't put it on target, you got to get full criticism. You have to get full criticism if you don't put it on target. And Percy Tau, man, that was a big chance. And the guy was kept missing sitter after sitter. 14th minute of the game, 19th minute of the game, and the 22nd minute, man, 34th and 42nd. I, I don't know what happened, guys. South Africa were amazing in the first half. Then the second half rolls around. And South Africa, I don't know what the what happened to them whatsoever. Mali, I think the dress room, I think maybe the, uh, the manager said some things to the players because the second half, man, Mali came alive. Mali came alive the second half. The second half, they really showed up. And the first goal, man, 60th minute, on the edge of the box, Triori scores a beautiful goal from the set piece there. Very, very well-worked goal. And the second goal, man, great, great counterattack there from Sianko. Uh, Duamba booking that pass there for Sianko. And Sianko finishing it. You know, and then I think uh, South Africa did have a chance right at the end there. They had a chance from the free kick, I believe, the, towards the end of the game. But obviously, um, it went wide. And yeah, for South Africa, man, I gotta say, man, they were just not great. They were just not great in the second half. And the second half ultimately costed them. And I think that penalty, missing that penalty that early in the game really changed the game. Because I do honestly genuinely believe if South Africa had scored that penalty, we could have had ourselves a very different game. I think South Africa could have maybe have, um, could have maybe have got something for this game. But that penalty miss just changes the game. And we all know, guys, in this sport that if you don't take your chances, you're gonna get punished. And South Africa didn't take their chance in the first half. Mali, Mali punished them, capitalized. And Mali got a big 2-0 win. And this is a huge win for Mali. Huge win for Mali. As you guys can see in the group table, they're currently first right now in the table. And Namibia second. Tunisia third. South Africa last. Th this group is going to get interesting because Namibia could, could qualify. Like, if they can get a result against Tunisia or South Africa, hey, they might be in the round of 16. Because, um, remember guys, the best third place teams get through. So... I think if they can get a point against either Tunisia or South Africa, sorry, not against Tunisia because they already won, um, the point against either Mali or South Africa, that could be in a good position. And let's be real, guys. South Africa, man, they were just disappointing. They really were disappointing the day. I wasn't really impressed. And South Africa, man, what, what happened to them second half, man? It really happened because they were awful the second half, man. Absolutely awful. And shout out to Mali, man. They were fantastic on the day. Man of the match, Traore, the right back, was fantastic. Basoma was also amazing. Kuyate, Neketa. And I remember they made some really, uh, really d close challenges in the first half and tactical fouls because had they made not made those fouls, South Africa could have maybe scored. And so it was really, really impressive for Mali to hold on and show the resilience. And the second half, man, they came alive. They came alive, and that's how about getting it done. Mali, man, shout out to Mali. They got the job done. So I want to know what you guys think in the comments below, guys. Remember, guys, we're gonna do our Afcon review tomorrow, guys, um, for tomorrow's uh, stream. So I hope you guys see you can see you guys then, man. Remember, guys, like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.